I don't think that's so much it's of totally a, appropriate. Oh, how is that a political yeah, statement? He's not even saying like, country. "Oh, America did good." Yeah. Beating China's yeah, ass. He didn't, he didn't say, say anything like that. It's, he just literally said, "Okay, let's remember the people who died." In our country. Welcome, Welcome to Tuesday's favorite K-pop show, DK News. Lots and lots of hot ass tea. First off, K-pop artist Holby gets criticized for having double standards, and people call her paintings crap. And second, acquaintance thief breaks into Kuara's house and steals her safe. And last but not least, BTS breaks records, hitting number one and two in the billboards. And China gets triggered because of their speech. And also, we have a review of their concert. And on to the first news. Torbi was criticized for having double standards as she came on a TV show and talked about her experiences as an artist. So she's this K-pop. Artist that was very big in the mid 2000s, late 2000s. I guess she wasn't very big, but she was recognizable. And now she's more of a painter than a K-pop artist. So Sorbi, who was a popular uh, K-pop artist in the 2000s, was the talk of town last week as she appeared on the TV show You Quiz on the Block to talk about her life as a painter. Uh, she talked about how. Other artists who graduated from art schools would frown upon her when she first stepped into the world uh, of art in early 2010s. Uh, she says someone even told her, "Why do you even paint? Art majors will hate it." Now this brought the spotlight onto a previous post made by the CEO of Sorbi's management company. Uh, this post made in August. Put up a picture of the number 84 and stated in a KBS variety show shoot in December 2016. A webtoon writer told Sorbi in a rude manner, "Why do you paint? Art majors will hate it." That writer's recent webtoons are very shocking and disgusting. Uh, because of him, others at the shoot also started driving the narrative that Sorbi doing art is a big mistake and it was a terrible memory. And I still remember how Sorbi was very uncomfortable. I am going to ask you what I wanted to ask you at that time. If you're so good at art, why don't you focus on it and not come on TV? Bam, bam, bam. Now the CEO posted this along with the hashtag Why is he 84? Is he born in 84? Is his weight 84 kilograms or his IQ 84? Of course, it became pretty obvious uh, that this was a shot at Kian84, uh, webtoon artist, and it only added more negativity to his uh, already kind of negative image. He had been the center of controversy for his content in webtoons, especially recently. Uh, check out the previous DK News episode up here if you want to know the full details. Uh, I think it's a pretty big no-brainer that it was rude for Kian84 to say something like this. However, many netizens surprisingly came out calling Sorbi out in the process. Too long didn't read. Kian84 was rude, but he was correct. If you think about what Sorbi has said in the past, the CEO should have been embarrassed and been quiet. I think he wanted to protect her and make her look good. Sorbi is Sorbi, but the CEO is really bad. And I don't care about Sorbi doing modern art, but her work getting a premium price tag for her celebrity status doesn't look good. Now, Sorbi had been very notorious for being careless with her words. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. She was coined the female Kim Gura. And in 2009, she told pop artist Nancy Lang, another very famous pop artist in Korea, uh, in a TV show that Nancy Lang is too weird and that she talks to dolls and I don't even know what she actually does, but she keeps coming on TV while Nancy Lang was sitting right in front of her. Mm. Many felt that it was very hypocritical for her CEO to be calling out Kiyang84 when Sorbi herself has a history of saying the things like he did. Mm -hmm. Also, a lot of people thought this was just karma hitting her back. And they even went as far to say that Sorbi was only being recognized as a painter because of her celebrity status. They criticized her paintings, which were being sold for high prices, saying that these prices are only possible because of her fame as a K-pop star. 
The CEO of Hobby's company eventually put up an apology post addressed to Kian84, Sorby, and the fans. Now, the controversy seems to have died down now, but it did entertain an interesting discussion about, you know, art value um, and also like celebrity string art. The whole center of this is the CEO. He's doing a one-man show. He's making all the problems. He's making all the apologies. Kian84 and Sorby aren't even saying anything. They're just yeah. there, like yeah. being summoned and being, like, right. you know, insulted. And I personally <laughs> understand where Kian84 was coming yeah. from with that statement. He started from the bottom. Mm. He he went through the struggle mm. and he went through the initiation process. Mm. It's kind of like how, you know, Gachi is not respected because <laughs> they don't go through that training process. Gachi again. I believe that anybody can be a K-pop mm. artist, but whether p the industry accepts them or not, it depends on whether they go through that initiation. Right. And I think Kian84 might have been talking from that point. I heard that the uh, opinion in the art industry in Korea is There's divided. an opinion about the art? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like about the art this community, in the art industry? The artist community? <laughs> okay. So I asked my artist friend, and she said that some people also agree with Kian. Tolbi is uh, just getting way too much attention compared to the uh, the quality of her work mm. uh, because she's a celebrity and they don't think that's fair. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, uh, a lot of people are also saying that she's bringing a lot of uh, public attention to modern art that wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for a K-pop artist showing this. So for example, uh, I actually looked at her, a lot of her pieces and I gotta admit like the early works, I, I wasn't really a fan of, but her recent work, you guys gotta see the red performance from Music Bank. Um, this is actually like a performance that she did uh, as a performance piece um, in galleries and stuff, but she also performed it on Music Bank. She calls it a self-collaboration where she as an artist, like a musician sings and also she as a painter paints at the same time. Mm, so wow, that's cool. It's it's very cool actually. So go check that out. I do agree that Scorby has had a huge head start mm. because of her celebrity status. But I also believe that's that just how the world is. I just believe that everybody can become an artist. Yeah. If the shit sells for high prices, I mean it's not her fault. And on to the next Entertainment news outlet Dispatch again released an exclusive yesterday about a burglary or robbery that happened in the now passed away Kuwata's house. Dispatch obtained two exclusive surveillance camera footages from last January which showed an, an unidentified male breaking into Kuwata's house. According to Dispatch, Kuwata's older brother Kuoin and a friend of Kuwata who lived together realized the theft in April and checked the security camera and there were a total of four security cameras but only only two showed the appearance of the thief. On the first tape of the footage, we can see an unknown male trying to pass the wall and reach the first floor of the house. That's pretty spooky it's, if it's you look at this. creepy as We can also observe that he tried to cover up the lenses of the camera with leaves in order to hide his movements. On the other footage, we can see that the man crosses through the front yard and tries to open the door by pressing a password for the door lock. It seems like the person knew the password to the door lock because he directly pressed it. Right. But as the door did not open, the thief checked if anybody was inside the house mm -hmm. or not. Kuara's friend said, after Hara left us, we changed the password and the only people that know the new password is myself and Hara's brother. And we assumed that the thief pressed the old password. Mm -hmm. Uh, dispatch did some work and got the height of the thief by measuring and comparing the height of the wall and the yeah. distance to the door lock. Some Mark. CSI shit there. Uh, the man was revealed to be around 175 cents. Wow. Shit, that's me. The man eventually broke in and stole Kuara's personal safe. Wow. And it was known that Kuara used to store her important files and mobile phones in this safe. <sighs> Kuara's brother stated that the suspect seemed to know the layout of the house very well. That's pretty scary. Yeah, he knew the exact location of the safe. He could navigate himself throughout the house very well. And also he knew the previous password to the door lock. Thus, the brother concluded that the thief should, would have been an acquaintance of Kuara. Now, a lot of netizens are guessing that the thief is likely to be Kuara's ex-boyfriend. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I'm not saying that, but considering the scandals that have happened between the two in the past, this is not proven. It's unproven <laughs> assumptions, so let's not jump to anything. I don't know if there's a lot to debate about this, but I just... No, it's it just... Up. It was spooky. It was yeah. scary. It's, it's one thing to have a random person try to steal shit from your house. Mm. That's kind of scary. But the fact that like this person knows the password, knew the password, right. and also knew the layout of the house where the safe was, mm -hmm. that's extra, oh. extra scary. Oh my god. Uh, that is very weird. Uh -huh. But if it is an acquaintance, mm. 
uh, I think it'll be pretty easy to track down who it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that Dispatch disclosed this kind of information because they're actually giving a lot of, you know, lead to the investigations. I don't know if there's... But, but my question is, what the f*** was Dispatch doing there? Yeah, that, that's another... <laughs> how did they what? get the surveillance footage just from January uh, when, uh, you know, that, that's, that's also very it's questionable. It's exclusive, but uh, I guess they're doing... Why are they releasing it now when it's in January? I don't know, just for views and clicks. But, yeah. Uh, at least they're doing something, contributing I, something to the I world. I guess. China might be boycotting BTS, but before we go on to that, mm -hmm. let's talk about BTS's achievement today. Okay, so Savage Love oh. uh, featuring BTS. It's a BTS remix, uh, song by Derulo, Josh685. BTS put out a remix of that to Josh685, the producer, handpicked BTS mm. to do the first remix mm. and they were credited in Billboard Hot 100 uh, and the song got number one Dynamite is number two Woo! so congratulations BTS is only one of the five artists mm. to ever achieve Billboard Hot 100 one and two at the same time Woo! Beatles, Bee Gees, Black Eyed Peas, Outkast and BTS wow. so everybody's B Starts with B, oh, uh, except oh, for Outcast. Outcast. Oh, he, because he's an Outcast. To get your remix credited as the song that gets listed in the charts, mm -hmm. your remix version has to have over 50% of the scores credited okay. to that uh, chart. Mm -hmm. People are buying and streaming more of the BTS remix mm -hmm. uh, of than Savage the Love than, than the original. Mm -hmm. That's why they were credited. Uh, so congratulations I mean, again. BTS power. Blackpink. The album. Oh, uh, the album. It got number two Hot in Hot 200. And that's the highest ever for a K-pop girl group. So, happy news! Yeah, happy news for K-pop. Uh, but, now some sad news. Okay. okay. BTS received some backlash from China for their acceptance speech on an award. Oh, uh, October 7th, BTS were awarded the Van Fleet Award, uh, an award given by the Korea Society to those who have helped strengthen ROK US relations. Mm. Uh, in the acceptance speech, BTS's RM stated, this year is especially special as it is the 70th anniversary of the Korean War. Right. We will always remember the history of pain that our two nations shared together and the sacrifices of countless men and women. Right. According to the Global Times, a Chinese state-run uh, English newspaper, RM speech plays up to the US, but the country played a role of the aggressor in the war. Oh. Talking about the United States. Chinese netizens said the band's totally one-sided attitude to the Korean War hurts their feelings and negates History. According to Global Times, again, BTS reached third on Weibo search rankings, and many uh, Chinese fans are now announcing they will not be an army anymore. Irrelevant. Uh, many retailers have reportedly taken down BTS editions of Galaxy phones. Go on. And now Samsung themselves, the company that itself, uh, have taken down BTS photos and the BTS edition phones off their official Chinese website. Do what you have to do. Hyundai Motors and Phila have taken the same approach on the morning of October 12th. Ads featuring BTS, which used to be on the front page of Hyundai Motors official Weibo, have been deleted. Fila have also hidden and deleted their posts with BTS on Chinese platforms. Mm. Uh, many Chinese netizens praised the quick responses of these companies, uh, while Koreans were obviously not welcoming the Chinese reactions. Here's some of the comments. BTS said what they had to say. We don't need to care about what the Chinese say. They throw a fit uh, whenever they feel just a bit uncomfortable, even when it's just facts. Mm. We don't need Chinese fans. China needs to disappear. Don't dare touch the BTS. Mm. China needs to go extinct. Oh. BTS fighting. At that time, we were enemies. What's wrong with the speech? Uh, China is a dangerous country. They think we are their colony. So so what is your opinion on this matter? Make yeah, it quick. It's absurd, you know. China's just making an outrage of something that were f that was just facts. You know, RM didn't say anything out of line. Like he just I, said, I, you yeah. know, we have strong relationships due to the Korean War and you know stuff like that. Historically, if you look at the role of China that played in the Korean War, if if China didn't intervene, like our country might have been one. And also, they were the ones that you know helped assault the South Korea. The now existing South Korea at this time. So it doesn't make sense 
when they're saying like, oh, we feel hurt when you guys only take sides for the US. That doesn't make sense. The Chinese army was the one that marched through the, our Korean soil and killed a lot of Korean soldiers as well. So that doesn't make sense in my I, opinion. I, We're the victims here. And why are the offenders uh, saying like- Regardless of like the historical context, RM never even mentioned yeah. China. Uh -huh. uh, he didn't mention anything really political about the Korean War. He just said, okay, let's just remember the sacrifices yeah. of American uh, soldiers uh -huh. and people. Uh, as well as Korean people. Regardless of which side you are on, mm -hmm. um, I think saying that, okay, let's remember people who helped us out during a war right. some like 70 years ago, I don't think that's so much it's of totally a- totally appropriate. Oh, how is that a political yeah, statement? He's not even saying like, country. oh, America did good yeah. beating China's yeah, ass. He didn't, he didn't say, say anything like that. It's, he just literally said, okay, let's remember the people who died uh, for our country. Out of everything that China can be offended about, this is like very, very minor, minor, minor. I feel like there was a political scheme behind this, definitely. Maybe. Because like the US and China are having a new new era cold war right now like huawei is getting banned the shit out of us samsung yeah, is profiting yeah. out of it korea is in the it's middle a sensitive time yeah korea is like in the middle oh yeah you know samsung's um samsung sales going up huawei bye bye and all that kind of stuff and uh trump is trying to you know uh sanction china and every every kind of force they have so i think you know this whole conflict and Korea in the middle profiting out of this like they don't like it they don't like yeah. it as the Chinese press and media is controlled by the government mm -hmm. the government can push their statements and opinions towards the press and I, I feel like that's how this flowed so we have another news item about BTS their concert mm -hmm. uh, so BTS held two amazing concerts on October 10th and 11th titled map of the soul one BTS performed 2.5 hours each day uh, it was very amazing. Filling the stage with uh, songs, like 23 songs each day mm -hmm. uh, from their discography. The concert gathered 990,000 viewers uh, from 191 regions okay. and countries. Uh, apparently, uh, people are estimating about 500 in sales from the concerts. Uh, that's like about uh, $45 million mm -hmm. from those two days of concerts. Mm -hmm. Initially, the concert was to be held with an offline audience, but due to heightened social distancing measures, it was switched to being strictly online. Um, however, they did not disappoint as fans connected via video chat mm -hmm. to cheer on BTS. And actually at one point, uh, they even sang with BTS and it was pretty uh, terrible cool. to hear actually, but- Still cool. <laughs> it was still cool. Oh, yeah. And they had live crowd noise, which mm -hmm. was pretty cool. Uh, now, AR was a very big part of the live as Giant RM appeared in uh, oh, Persona intro. Like the idol. But perhaps what caught my attention the most was their use of extended reality, oh. XR. I never heard about this. Mm. This was in DNA. Mm -hmm. And I, when I saw the stage, I was like, oh my God, like this is the future right here. Mm. So the stage became extended mm -hmm. with uh, computer graphics yeah. and it interacted with things that were happening off the stage. Oh. So like if this was a stage, the computer graphics extended it to like the universe. It seemed to show the possibilities of what one could achieve when doing these online concerts. Mm -hmm. And it really just showed like, okay, this is the future right mm -hmm. here. Uh, RM also made a very moving ending speech. We are strong. The armies I know and the BTS you all know, we're all strong. We'll find a way. If there's no way, let's draw the map. The whole map again. Wow. Map of the soul. Whoa. Meanwhile, big hit will be publicly listing in Korean stock exchange this Wednesday. BTS's upcoming album B is set to release on November 20th. Did you see the concert? Yeah, little snippets of it. Mm. Mm. I, I, I watched through the entire thing. I was very, very impressed. Yeah, I saw I some amazing mind. tech, cutting edge tech there. Like, oh, the, did you see the elevator scene? when they That were DNA. Like, yeah, DNA. Oh, that was DNA, okay. Yeah. Ironically, just yesterday, the social distancing measures got alleviated. Right, right. So, now clubs are open. Yeah, clubs are open restaurants and uh, everything yeah. so it's kind of you know a missed opportunity so kind of sad though. i mean it was 700 people yeah. honestly so we're not like losing much mm -hmm. <laughs> one wish though uh i guess like this is just bts concerts in general because it happened last year as mm -hmm. well i wish the vcrs were shorter okay. and less frequent okay. three songs and then like a five minute vcr mm -hmm. And then three songs. For me, who's used to like just a full-on concert, mm. it cuts the yeah, flow. Yeah, I get your point. But and 
But anyway, uh, yeah, it's a great concert, guys. Yeah, but I want to say an unpopular opinion. The, the future of concerts and all, like online and cutting edge tech is all good, but I still think it will never match the uh, vibes of offline concerts. Of course. Yeah. Even if we lack all this kind of technology in offline concerts, I still think the offline concerts where you see BTS as tiny little peas, that's that even gives you a better experience than like, you know, all this, you know, 3D, a, a VR, it can't, XR. It can't, it can't match. match. It's unruled. And um, I think the way to go is like now that we know we have this kind of technology, I think integrating that to offline concerts is the way. I also think that offline concerts will never go extinct. Mm. But at the same time, I think artists will be much less inclined mm -hmm. to do them as intensively yeah. as they used to. Because honestly, like touring is very hard. Mm -hmm. uh, it requires a lot of money. And, and they got a taste of this good money here. <laughs> I mean, this <laughs> In is easy. In their comfy room. Like, yeah. look, you go to work. Uh -huh. Leave right. an hour later, you're home. Olympic Gymnasium is in Songpa. Like their their uh, dorm is in mm. Hanam, so that's like what a 20 minute car ride. Right, right. End the concert, mm -hmm. and then you take a shower, and then go home. Yeah. 20 minutes later, you're having a beer. So that that's so comfortable. Yeah. I, so, so no more private jets and airplanes appearing in their lyrics. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's this week's DK News. Actually, we have a few more items mm -hmm. that were on the list that didn't make it to DK News, but right. we'll talk about them in Patreon, patreon.com slash DKDKTV. For example, let's talk about Kukabi oh, um, Korean and English Korean man's Englishman's wife, wife yeah. uh, her getting into this huge ass controversy, uh, which is kind of really, really uh, weird. I was very confused why this woman was acting that way. But anyway, stuff like that. Very interesting. Patreon.com slash DKDKTV. Uh, our DK News After Show will talk about it. You can chat with us live and debate. The time is down below here. So uh, meet y'all and Patreon. Patreon.com slash DKDKTV. And bye-bye.